Welcome to the Progeny Expert Interview Series. I'm Dr. Georgia Whitkin, and today we're talking about family building for the LGBT community. And I'm talking with Dr. Guy Ringler of the California Fertility Partners. Uh, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Let's talk about female couples. Lesbian women should start with a complete fertility evaluation to make sure that um, they're o they have normal functioning o ovaries, to check their ovarian reserve, check the anatomy of the uterus to make sure it's going to be a receptive environment for the pregnancy. And then they will decide who will be the egg provider, who will carry the pregnancy. Um, and in my experience, most women have very strong feelings about who will be the egg provider who wants to carry the pregnancy. So the person who's the egg provider becomes the genetic donor. Correct. The person who's the recipient becomes the biological parent. Her body is building that baby. Very often the decision medically should be made based on age. That's not always the same as the emotional commitment of it's the not, couple. It's not always the yeah. case, but we, we always discuss that because age is so important. Age affects the percent of eggs that are chromosomally normal and abnormal, and age is going to affect her fertility potential. Mm -hmm. So um, most patients today elect to do genetic screening of the embryos, pre-implantation genetic screening, or PGS. So we'll know if the embryos are, are normal or not. We'll mm -hmm. know if they're healthy enough to do a, a transfer into the recipient. Mm -hmm. So um, for the, the older partner, it does give her the ability to determine if she has a normal egg to create a normal embryo. Mm -hmm. So you find generally that even if the couple comes in very clear on who wants to donate and who wants to carry, if that's not consistent with what would be medically best, then they, that they're generally open they're to They're generally it. open. I mean, ultimately they want a healthy baby right. and they want to be successful. They want to start their family. Imagine when they're picking a sperm donor. What would be most important is not doubling up on pathology with the gene pool of whoever is donating the egg. Are there other things you're finding are very important to them or that you well, would recommend? Well, sperm donation is interesting because, you know, we've done egg donation now for over 20 years and when you select an egg donor you get so much more information than you get from a sperm donor specimen from a sperm bank. Most it's of so much easier <laughs> to get sperm. Well, most, most of the time you don't have an adult photograph, you don't have the option of meeting the individual and so I think that's one, one obstacle many of my patients have getting over is, you know, gee, you know, I wish we had more information, you know, uh, to, uh, before we select the genetic provider of my children. Um, it, it would be nice if sperm banks became a little more advanced and provided adult children or an option of meeting the egg donor, like we have an egg donation today. Is it going that way? There's a few sperm banks where you can see adult photographs. Mm -hmm. And more information about the gene pool, but? A li little more information. You have a donor for so long in your hands because she's taking hormones, you're prepping the ovaries, you're collecting the eggs, but sperm is collected very quickly. So I guess it's harder to get that information. Well, I think it's just egg donation is a newer model. Mm -hmm. um, um, we have many egg, wonderful egg donor banks around the country, so individuals can really find whatever they're looking for. If they have a specific re heritage requirement, educational requirement, exactly. um, artistic requirement, I always tell my patients, you can really find whatever you're looking for. Take your time, find out someone who um, affects you, impacts you in some way, and then we look at her her medical characteristics to make sure she's going to qualify to be a good egg donor. And then she'll undergo a thorough physical exam, genetic evaluation, psychological evaluation before she's ultimately medically approved for the process. Here's what I always add. You're not getting her. You could be getting her great, great uncle Harry and her grandma Sadie. So, Make sure that you don't think this is match.com. Make sure you're understanding you're getting a gene pool and it's mixing with the other gene Absolutely, pool. but it's a wonderful mixture, hopefully. Yes, it is. I have a note from one of our members saying that they were reading about reciprocal IVF. Are we talking about two Reci females? Yes, re okay. reciprocal I IVF refers to a lesbian couple where one woman, one partner is the egg provider. She, we create embryos with her eggs and the embryos transferred into her partner as the carrier, the recipient um, of the embryos. 
We were saying before that when it's a male-male partnership and one contributed his uh, genetics, he, that couple might be more inclined to have a second child so the second partner has an opportunity. Do you find that with lesbian couples as well? That if one is giving the egg the first time, the other, if it's age appropriate and if it's a healthy egg, might I want. I think oftentimes, yeah. oftentimes, you may not want to carry the pregnancy, but I think there's just this innate desire for many human beings to reproduce, to see yeah. their own offspring. Yes. So um, whether you're, you're straight or gay, lesbian, um, many individuals really want to have their own biological offspring. Yeah. And there's tremendous drive. That's why we see so many individuals, you know, in their mid-40s who've never had children um, who would benefit from a donor egg. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle to make that decision, to give up that chance to have their own biological children. Mm -hmm.